Hi, I'm Alan. Uh, welcome to uh, our talk at uh, the Filecoin booth in East Denver. Um, I want to talk about using decentralized data to prove your claims. Okay. And um, this is actually, we just built this thing in the past uh, like couple weeks uh, called Liquicert. Um, and so I want to talk about how this is sort of the trust piece that fits into this larger thing that we're building called Operat. And the, the problem is we live in a world of broken promises, right? And so we in Falcon Green think a lot about the promises that we make about sustainability. And these are just some of the main like news headlines that have come out in the past 13 months or so about carbon offsets and voluntary carbon markets. And so there's been you know, headlines showing that 90% of rainforest carbon offsets um, within a given, a given certification system um, weren't doing what they said they were doing. Um, recently, just last month, a headline came out about cook stoves. So these are projects where they're giving efficient cook stoves to people and saying that that reduces emissions. And those can be really good projects, but they don't actually reduce emissions very much, the study found. Um, the, uh, the largest carbon offset nature-based solutions uh, project in the world um, was just a few months ago shown to, to not be so solid. Right, so, so we live in a world of broken promises and we'd like to fix that. We also live in a world where trust in data is increasingly at a premium. And we're thinking about things like this, this link between climate and finance and how we need to be able to allocate capital in order to, to, reverse, stop, to reverse climate change and um, halt biodiversity loss. Thinking about sort of misinformation that is present all over the world increasingly. We're thinking about the data that goes into and comes out of AI models. We need better ways of tracking that and being able to prove claims around all of these things, right? And so we, you know, ultimately, we think of this as a real world claims. At ETH Denver, a lot of people are talking about real world assets. If you're trading things on chain that have to do with the real world, claims about what is happening in the real world are central to that, right? And so we're thinking about real world claims like my trip to ETH Denver was carbon neutral. We're thinking about claims like we've removed 15 tons of CO2. If you're trading carbon offsets on chain, that's hugely relevant that you actually removed the carbon you said you were going to. Or our blockchain runs on renewable energy. This is a type of claim that we have a lot of experience with. And so the trouble is we don't have great solutions in crypto for validating claims about the real world. And so these claims are not like ownership, right? It's not like ownership of an NFT where you can just verify it on chain and say your address owns this. They're not claims like price, right? Because the information isn't distributed. Um, they're not claims like just state because you need compute over data for a lot of these claims. They're not like identity. Identity is a piece of these claims, but just proving who you are isn't sufficient. Um, it's not a market because price is not a proxy for validity. The fact that people want to pay more for a data set um, kind, of gets, get, kind of gets it backwards, right? The fact that people want to pay more for a data set doesn't show that the data is real. Hopefully it's the reverse. People want to pay more for your data set because your data set is actually validated. Um, it's not like Deepin, uh, we don't have time to build new consensus mechanisms for every sing single thing that we want to validate about the real world. And it's not uniform. So different data is validated differently. And we're building this system called Operad to address a lot of these challenges. What I'm going to focus on today is something called Liquicert, which, which, uh, which allows you to take these claims and justify why you should believe those claims. So we were thinking about this and trying to think, you know, what tools can we build in our area, right? Working at Falcon Green, thinking a lot about validating decentralized data. What tools can we build to address these types of problems? How does trust actually like work in the real world? And when we read a lot of the political science and sociology literature on this, we found that trust is, um, it flows through society, right? It's not just a single, you don't just make a claim and decide to trust it or not trust it. You also don't do diligence on every single claim that you're asked to trust in the real world, right? So trust is delegated to people who know a lot about the area that you are being asked to make a decision on, right? And so this paper, there's a bunch of papers about this, this thing called an issue public. An issue public is a group of people who have interest and expertise in an area. They deliberate within that area and then they offer their conclusions to the wider public. And so you might trust an academic lab because they have a lot of experience in this area. You might trust an NGO who does a lot of, of like human development work. You might trust all of these different groups because they have expertise, experience in this area, right? And they also might not validate all of the claims that they rely on directly. They may trust some other group because 
that group has expertise in the subdomain of that area, right? So trust flows, right? And so we decided to build infrastructure that actually replicates this in a way that's cryptographically verifiable. Because the problem is, if we have all these tools for validating low-level data, right, we can show that a signature is valid, we can show that data wasn't tampered with, we can verify the data that's coming into our browser or into our database. Um, we have all these tools for dealing with low-level data, making sure it's not corrupted, but we don't actually have tools that replicate these data processing, sort of distributed information processing functions across society that are necessary for determining who to trust. And so the hypothesis here, right, is that that's a big part of the problem around misinformation, is that if we have low-level tools for validating data, but we don't actually know how to track trust in a way that's scalable across society, because like deciding which of these organizations to trust is totally analog, right? So if we don't have tools to, to speed that up, then we're gonna be swamped with, with misinformation and not know what to trust. And so here's, a, here's sort of an example of that, right? So I might personally not know what the carbon intensity is of the electrical grid in this state or in this country at this given time of day, right? But I might go and say, I wanna know this for a given storage provider. I know their location. I wanna know what the carbon intensity of their grid is. I might not do the diligence myself to actually know where to get that number, but I talk to this other organization that is involved in energy audits. They've gone and they've uh, contracted with Wattime. So Wattime is an NGO based in Oakland, California that specializes in understanding the carbon intensities of different grids. And then they sign that data, right? And so you can trace this trust flow and you don't just reduce it to a given score. You don't reduce it to just like thumbs up, thumbs down, but we actually want to be able to preserve that path information so that you're not just told, trust this or don't trust this. You're actually told, this is why you should trust this. If you're trusting this, this is who you are relying on so that you can go back and audit that. And so we just built this thing called liquidcert.io um, to try and do this. Um, and so I wanna walk you through, yeah, they actually, the internet is like pretty good at Eat Denver this year. It was terrible last year, but it actually like works. So hopefully we can like do a demo. Um, and so the idea in LiquidCert is that you create a community and this community has opinions about who to trust, right? And so I can, um, I'll zoom in on this bit. So you can create a community and that community has opinions about who to trust about what. And so these different communities have been created. You can, if you have a, a, a crypto wallet, you can just, on Sepolia, you can just enter a community name here and hit register, sign, sign something, and it'll add your community to the smart contract. And then that community can, uh, can validate different delegates. So for example, with Filecoin Green, we've gone through and we've said, here are other communities and contributors that we trust, right? So we trust this, this group that we made called Refi Inc. We trust Anthesis, which is this independent auditor for energy data. Um, we, labeled, uh, we labeled this community as specifically not trusted. We'll like come back to tracking misinformation through this. And then what you can do then is if you go back and you can also, you can browse content and attest to content. And so what happens here is that you can say, all right, we have these different pieces of content and we wanna know, should we trust that content? Should we not trust that content? What are the arguments that we should trust it or not trust it? And have that be automated and ingestible so that if you're just interested in the end result, you can get that. But if you are skeptical about that, that end result, you can go back and, and trace that and try to figure out what that trust trail looked like. So, you know, here's an example um, of a, uh, a solar renewable energy certificate, right? So this is what this, this CID links to. This is just a certificate showing that a certain amount of renewable energy was purchased in France for the Filecoin network under a given, a given period. And so you can go and you can say, all right, do I, do I trust this information, right? Someone told me that I should trust this. Can I actually like find out an argument that I should or shouldn't trust this information? So I can go and I can look at this data and I can say, all right, where's a, here's a community I trust. I trust Falcon Green on this data. Find me an argument that I should trust this data that I can then validate using this smart contract. And so you can say search and it found two different trust paths from your community to that data. And it shows you, all right, this community you trust, trusts Refi Inc, who trusts this rec scraper, who trusts, who like signed that data, who attested to that data. And you can, you know, find other trust paths and compare them. And so um, the, another thing that you can do is, you know, you saw that 
um, some of these, these pieces of information or communities were labeled as not trusted, right? So like, what do you do if the world, the internet is full of misinformation and like, you don't wanna just say, okay, these are all the things I trust. You actually specifically wanna say like, this is a bad actor actually, who's like providing information that you probably shouldn't trust. And if you trust me and you're trying to validate this information and they say it's true, then like, you wanna be careful about that, right? So we went and we, uh, we took some content. Um, so we, we, got this, we got this deep fake that's, you know, uh, gonna, gonna convince everyone that mammoths are, are, you know, marauding on the streets of Denver, right? And we said, you know, so this was attested to by a known misinformer in our, in our community. Um, or that we that our community knows about. So we can say, all right, so for this this data, right? So we have the CID of this data, you can copy that CID. Everything is, is uh, verifiable in form of attestations and also um, these trust trails that are tracked on, on Sepolia. Um, so you can say, all right, do, should I trust this data? Should I not trust this data? Let's try searching. And we found a trust path, but that trust path says, all right, Falcon Green community, who you do trust, specifically knows that this address that attested to this data is a source of misinformation. And so according to this path, this path is valid, but the data is not trusted along this path. You should probably not trust this data. Um, and so, you know, if you want, you can copy the proof that shows the, this reference to first the attestation and then each hop along this trust path. And you can show, okay, there's a community, part of the smart contract has delegated trust to this other community, also on the smart contract, who has labeled these guys as misinformers. And so the last thing I wanted to do, um, I hope this will work. Um, I, wanted to, I wanted to try sort of showing how this works in practice, right? And so, um, so I'm, gonna, I'm gonna take a selfie of myself. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna try uploading this. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a community. So I'm gonna say, all right, so let's go to the communities page and my name's Alan. Um, so I'm gonna create, I'm gonna create a community for myself, right? So I'm gonna connect to this. I'm gonna say, this is, this is my community, right? So I'm gonna, gonna try registering this. And we, we successfully created this community and added this to the smart contract. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, so I'll choose my, uh, my address. I'll, uh, I'm gonna disconnect and I'm gonna go to uh, Refi Inc. And I'm gonna say, all right, Refi Inc. is gonna trust me, right? So Refi Inc., we're gonna say, all right, we're gonna add a delegate. Um, so actually first we're gonna switch to this other, this other accounts. Where did it go? It went somewhere. Here we go. So we're gonna to switch to this other account. We're gonna say this new delegate name, this other person that I trust is Alan. Their address is this. We're gonna register them. We have to sign this because we have to, have to add this to the contracts. And so hopefully in you know, a second or two, this should, uh, this should go through. I think that went through. Let's see, did it work? Oh no, still didn't see it. Am I, okay, so I'm registered, that's good. Details, yeah, okay, so that's good. So, does Refi Inc. trust me? Apparently not. I'll try, I'll try fixing this one more time, see if this works. Refi Inc. Confirm. Hopefully that'll work, we'll see. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to this other community and I'm gonna attest to that photo that I just took, right? So I'm gonna take this photo, I'm gonna download this. is I'm going to put this up on web3.storage. It's going to upload this here.
and hopefully that works. Yeah, all right. All right, so now I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna look at this community that I just created, so, so Alan. And I'm gonna upload this content and I'm gonna attest to it. So I'm gonna say, you know, uh, selfie at ETH Denver. The CID is here. Hopefully that, that works. Yes, that's us. I'm gonna say um, uh, at the ETH Denver FF uh, lounge uh, and it's trusted. I'm gonna make sure, I'm gonna connect to, to my wallet. Gonna disconnect from here. Connect, and I'm going to attest to this content. So I'm Alan, Selfie Dave Denver, signed this, this got added. And now, I don't know actually if the Refi, the Refi Inc. community managed to add me. We'll see if there's a trespass to this. One trespass was found. All right, so Refi Inc. trusts me, who trusts Selfie Idiot Denver. The data is trusted along this path. This path is valid. Um, you can copy a proof here that refers to that smart contract and refers to the attestation. Um, and you can go and you can uh, see indeed that this is the selfie we just took. Um, so yeah, so we're, we're excited to build out a lot of this infrastructure. We're excited to work with different communities um, that care about data quality and care about telling their users why they should or shouldn't trust some data. Um, and uh, please, you know, talk to me or talk to Caitlin, my, uh, my partner in crime um, in a lot of this trust tooling. Um, and uh, happy to see you around. Cheers.